All right, it, this is the secret history living in your aquarium. Today we have a special guest. I'm a guest at his house, and we're checking out his setup. He's another local uh, Seattle area uh, fellow shrimp keeper and fish keeper, and he's got some pretty awesome stuff, including a Fajaca puffer, and uh, I'll let you take it away here on this part. So I'm Chase. This is my fish room. Welcome to it. So this is Sean. He's uh, probably about a four-month-old Fajaca now. He's just living in this little tank. He's going to upgrade, but treating them with the meds when they come in from the wild sure. is a lot cheaper yeah. than treating 120 gallons of water. That and, uh, yeah, the worms and things that mm. they tend to have seem to be an so issue. He came in from the wild, so he got treated for all of his parasites and Great. internal worms and everything. So how long have you had him? He's four months now, about. Okay. He came in, when I got him, he was maybe about... Oh. He was smaller than a pea puffer. Small, wow, you've been feeding him well then. He's yeah. growing quick. So here we'll give him a couple rounds of right. morning Gosh. breakfast. If you guys haven't seen this before, it's it's carnage. They're good at eating good at eating ram sword snails or any snails for that matter. He's got cool eyes. There you go, that was two. Oh wow, day. he sucked yeah, look, he left if if you can see folks, he left that shell completely empty he just sucked that out like like a vacuum cleaner like there's nothing to it he is a velociraptor <laughs> but this tank looks very nice also i must say uh you've got a nice layout for him yep. definitely and then the story you were telling me here is we've got some are these neon green raspberries or are they just green raspberries neon green ne raspberries. yeah and so uh, you, there you go, you can catch the green on them, but apparently they're uh, one of the only things that's quick enough to get away from this guy, so for now anyways. For now. Uh, yeah, although when they get bigger, I've noticed sometimes you can put small fish in and they don't bother. It's yeah, like, yeah. it's not on their radar, you know? He, he's still in his frisky age right now, Yeah. So he's after everything. Yeah, well, he's got some beautiful markings coming out too. You can see the, the color within the bands and stuff. So these are a uh, very cool fish. They're um, a little bit hard to find right now. They are hard to find. They come from the from uh, uh, Egypt, yeah. usually the Nile. Yeah. And there's other variations. If you were hearing an odd noise, I just wanted to show real quick. What's what's the bird's name? His name is Marley. Marley. He's orange wing Amazon. Oh, pretty bird. <laughs> Well, I just I, the, shop, buddy. the noise going on. I thought I'd I'd uh, pan over. So if He's anybody had questions, everybody, that's his thing. That's all good. Yeah. So I wanted to also take a look at. You were telling me about this project, and so I wanted to share this with folks. So mm -hmm. if you want to explain a little bit of a, a the concept, and then I'll go film down into it a little bit more. So it's the green really project, is what I call it. Okay. And as of a couple of weeks ago even, I had never seen a green really. I've heard people talk about wanting the strain in the hobby. Sure. But the first time I ever saw one was about, actually even like two weeks ago now, I saw a picture of one hit one of the forums. But before that, I've heard people say they wanted to see them. So this is my project of them. It's All right. I gathered the best three green jades I could find. And then release from every strain, and we're just gonna kind of let it go in the planted tank and see what comes of it. I mean, nobody really knows what genes yeah. needed to create the green release. And we've got some very nice colored uh, Brigitte rasboras, by the way, zip and buy. If you see those, zip by. That's what that is. But then here is this is this a blue of some sort here or black or what do we got that's going on? That's a carbon up? really. That's a carbon really. Okay. And then there's a blue really in there. There's a couple reds. Okay. And then the green jades. There's also a ghost shrimp and a couple of mono in there. Great. And so what I like about this guy's tank, here we've got one of the the reallys, the red reallys, and he's using the feeding trays, which is also great. He's got the gold uh, ram's horn snails with the uh, ultra red or pink, which is kind of cool. I saw in here earlier that he had some red reallys that are pregnant right now, which is also always a good sign, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the other thing I wanted to take note of is in the Seattle area, a lot of times you get uh, shells that are looking real bad on ram's horn snails, and your ram's horns look good, so you're uh, remineralizing yep. in the tank. Because here in Seattle, we have very, uh, very, very uh, low TDS water with uh, basically nothing but a little bit of chlorine and 
that's about it, isn't it? <laughs> it's pretty much rainwater. So let's just pan around a little bit. I know some of you like snails, so I'll get some shots of some snails in here. But um, yeah, here, was this a Imano going by? What am I looking at here? I'm trying to see, or is that a- Yep, that was the Imano yeah. running yeah. back there. All right, and then he's got a very nice scape going on in here too. So I wanted to just show, this is how you do it. So you got the sponge filter and you got your heater and your light, but he's left plenty of room for everything. He's even got uh, some carpeting starting in his plants. This, you're using CO2 in this tank at, is this the two drop? Yep, two bubbles a second. So this is two bubbles a second. You can see his Java, his Java moss back there? Yep. Java moss looks beautiful. It's not a tangled mat like it is in a low tech tank frequently. Uh, and he's just growing out uh, lots of nice plants. Uh, is that a Rotala indica of some sort? Or um, what yeah. What do the, we have back there? The, the orange one? or? Uh, oh, wait, is that Rotala? So there's two. There's Rotala. It was sold to me as indica, but now that I'm looking on the forums, it's actually another type of is it Rotala. Lilikia, maybe? I think so. Okay. And then the really red one that's right there in the middle of everything is, yeah. a, a, I believe, it's another type of Rotala. Yeah. It looks like a rotund, maybe a Rotala Rotunda folia pink think, or something I like think that. So. Something like that. But. In any case, he... Um, there's hygro octopus in the middle. Oh, yeah. Hey, you've got that growing nice. That's growing very nice with uh, the the CO2 helps keep that compact, too. Uh, my In my low-tech tanks, you guys have probably noticed on other videos that my octopus plants are always spindly, like, going crazy. Well, so there, if you look, there's high-tech octopus and low-tech oh, yeah. octopus Perfect. Right so, yeah, high-tech octopus plant right here and low-tech octopus. So yeah, you can see the huge difference in how compact uh, the, the plant can be. Also, you can see how red these plants are and the nice coloring. That's definitely Wallachia back there, I can tell for sure. Uh, if it, Are those the same plant? Yeah. So yeah, that, that's that gotta be Wallachia or Wallachia. I don't know how to say it for, for sure, but uh, yeah, so very cool stuff, and in here his goal is to be breeding some green or jade uh, striped really shrimp. I've seen uh, the orange ones, I've seen blue, but the blue line doesn't seem that stable either, unless it's mixed with the carbon line from what I've witnessed. Carbon seems nice and stable, but the green, I am going to love to check back in with you and find out who mated with who and what's going on, you know. Uh, also, I wanted to mention briefly, in this tank, we've got some really beautiful shrimp and endlers. He's got some, are these just natural endlers? Like, what? Uh, those are uh, lime green endlers. For lime green. green, okay. They should be the wild. Yeah. I don't, I, I'm not, pardon me, I don't know the N class or K class or however that system is going, but. Be N class, and, lime green. Okay, and lime green. Uh, and then those look great. I like this system too of keeping a couple endlers with, with the shrimp, you know, and then the auto or, uh, but we've got, that's a panda there. Yep. And then also we've got these. Those are blue. High grade, or. That's a, I would consider that a low grade. Low grade? Bolt. Okay. So a lower grade blue bolt. You can see actually, I can't see it with my eyes, but in the picture you can mm -hmm. actually see a, a blue halo with the light coming through the shell. So that's kind of interesting. Um, and then he has them, but <clears throat> they are hiding as shrimp do, but he has some uh, dancing men shrimp uh, from Monica, which is very cool. And uh, yeah, so I'll just just pan, wanted to pan around, show how clean his tanks are. He's got everything labeled nicely, and uh, very very cool stuff. He's got a backup pair somewhere else, which is always a great idea uh, in case the power goes out or something disastrous happens. So he's got his bases covered, and then he did the old cinder block trick for. Uh, for building uh, scaffolding for his racks, which is also great. So, uh, 
Very cool setup, man. Uh, thank you for having me over. Uh, up here we have some Michelings that have been crossed with, uh, uh, what were they crossed with again one more the time? The blue bolts, or the black ones have been crossed with blue bolts, and okay. the red ones have just been crossed with uh, pandas. Okay, so the black ones are crossed with blue bolts, and they're just Michelings basically, and then the that's actually one of the crystals from the wet spot. This is one of the crystals? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So the wet spot, which you guys probably saw the video I did. Uh, and then, let's see, we got one more hiding over here. Uh, so, yeah, we've got, there's a selection of those in there. And as shrimp do, like I said, they're hiding. But um, the dragon stone is also a great feature to have for your shrimp, as well as these sponge filters I think that's the way to go now we've kind of reverted back from thinking we need these crazy setups with you know for sure you need a sump and you need a, a uh, hang off the back and this and that now it turns out with the right substrate and a sponge filter and a little bit of water movement and agitation at the top airlines can run things pretty well and the uh, the personal hobby uh, people at home is starting to pick that up uh, again rather than just pet stores and things running stuff that way so yeah thank you so much for having me out here and showing me this setup it's nice and compact here we have some bloody mary shrimp uh, of the neo caradina variety now those come from the dark black uh, wild caught neo caradinas and they have a redder flesh than the uh high grade cherry shrimp. They also aren't as bright red. They're not like a candy red necessarily. They're more of like a crimson ideally. And so they also have grades as any gene pool has different variations, but he's got some uh, young ones, but then he's also got some brand new ones that I saw a minute ago. Uh, oh yeah, there we go. If we can zoom in on that, on the uh, Pelia or the Siswasertong, uh, which, is growing nicely due to the CO2. That's the difference between the stuff at my house that is a giant crazy mess of a clump and the nice tidy uh, growth you get with CO2. Also up here, I wanted to point out his, his beautiful work with the uh, Java moss. He's also sucking nitrates and ammonia out with, uh, was that water lettuce and duckweed or what? Uh -huh. Frog bit, and Fro duckweed. frog bit and duckweed. All right, cool. So yeah, and then uh, I just brought him over some of the leopard endlers, also a pair of those. So hopefully, he has some fun with that. And uh, I like this. This system is very compact and very neat and tidy, man. So thank you again. Is there anything else you wanted to point out before? I don't know if you saw these, but these are from um, from um, um, Zen Aquarium Zen. Yeah, they're yeah. his LT gray. Ah, wow. uh, yeah. He always has some cool stuff. Steve yeah. has got some cool stuff in, in there. So I'll try to get those to stay still, but, you know, yeah, do what we can, do. as fish do. But these are a nice El Tigre wild, and it's getting very, very hard to find wild endlers uh, strains. Germany has quite a few in the hobby, but America has mixed most with guppies. And also, the other thing uh, is that now they're finding that a lot of the wild sources have at least 10 or 20% guppy genetics in, in the population. And so they're wondering how, quote-unquote, pure of a species it is or whether it's almost a, a subspecies. But that's a debate that's for geneticists and will go on for a really long time. There's the orange project. This one's the orange neo. Okay. Seen. There's him sitting on the Monte Carlo. Uh, okay, there. so we got orange neo in this tank as a project. Of course, he just swims away as, as right. I... As I get in here, but that well, that is the tank that I was showing you earlier. And let's see, can we sneak a peek at any others in there right now? There's just two boys and that big old beautiful girl right now. Two boys and a beautiful girl. That is a way to assure some genetics right there that you want. So you can get a peek of the orange in there right now. 
Uh, have you seen the the reallys that are orange? Yeah, they're yeah. beautiful they're, too. They're very That's cool. That's another new strain that I've just recently seen. Yeah, so I'm really impressed with uh, folks who are keeping strains in and are this self controlled in having like only a couple shrimp in a setup. There's the boy. On and, the... Oh, there's the boy. Thank you very much for pointing that out. So there's the male. And, come on, there we go. And he's just chilling, but. When you give them this much space, uh, they definitely uh, do better, I think. And then also, you have less room for, oh crap, the uh, parameters exactly. went haywire. That's, so That's even, uh, the 10 gallon, I, that's even small for me. For yeah, shrimp. yeah, 20, is, 20 I, long is ideal as I you've got going. I've got one like a hawk. Yeah. But the 20s, the, that's, I would say, if you're going to breed <clears> shrimp, a 20 long is the way to go. And I have to ask you one more time. So your neo caradinas, what are you keeping those at? What's the parameters on those temperature? And so all of my neos, they sit at right around 70, 71 degrees on the temperature. Uh, okay. I wouldn't be running heaters, but my, my setup's out in the garage and sure. we're in Washington. So yep. my garage can get down in the 30s. Yep. So heaters are necess necessary. Totally. Um, I remineralize my water up to about 250 TDS for the neos. Okay. Uh, same exact steps for the Caradina, only I remineralize up to about 110. Okay, 110. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Looks like you got catapa leaves everywhere too, which is also good mm -hmm. for immune system and growth, as well as the um, uh, uh, cola wood. I don't know how to say Chala. it. Chala. I Chala. Chala. I don't know if that's right. Yeah, and, and that's, so that's another debate. Maybe somebody on... YouTube wants to tell me how wrong I am, but I've heard it Chala, Chala, and Chola, and I've heard all sorts of names. So let me know if you know for sure. If you if you have like a reason to know, if you just have a hunch, like I, no offense, but I don't need that comment. But if you know for some reason, let me know. Also, it looks like we've got a beautiful guppy here, snake snake skin or what's yeah, that's yeah. my lady snake skin. Lady snake skin. She is very nice with very nice tail as well so all right well thank you for showing me that stuff and uh you want to leave with the puffer feeding yeah we'll leave with another puffer feeding here so we'll leave it the way we started it here's a bigger one for you and so. he knows what's going on puffers are very personable they're like little puppy dogs yeah so sees. here we go he knows what's going on and he, does he have it does he have it yep he's got it and just ruthless, you know, they can crack through and with their teeth, they, they, uh, I mean, they're strong teeth. They could, they can crack a walnut basically with those teeth. Uh, let's see here. He knows where it's at. He sees it. And my guess is he'll do like the last time and crack open a piece and then kind of suck it out, right? Yep, is that that's usually his MO. So are you uh, constantly pulling these shells out of there or do, do they kind of just... Not really. I mean, if I, when I, his is one of the rare tanks that I will gravel back. Yeah. So uh, like once every couple of weeks I'll suck up all the shells that I can get to. But oh, yeah, there he goes. Just, just spits out. Just, just shell. shell that's that's an amazing like trick right there. Yeah. It's like tying he, he can, cherry stems in your mouth or something. He, he can process them too. So if he yeah. swallows them, he's totally fine with that as well. Yeah. So that's really cool. There's that other one that kind of got away for a sec, for a sec. <laughs> so and you can see that eye has that uh, free range of move motion. Both eyes can focus on separate things like a chameleon, or like a raptor almost. Mm -hmm. So very they, cool they have one of the best vision too he can see they say like 30 feet outside of their wow aquariums they can actually see i wonder if the parrot and him have anything to say to one another right probably <laughs> he, he likes staring at the guppy he likes the that's, guppy that's huh? buddy. awesome dude well thanks again for showing uh me all this chase uh thanks for having no thanks for being on the show for a little episode today and uh does the puffer have a name? His name's Sean. Sean, okay, Sean. Sean Combs. Ah, oh, yeah, Puffy, it. got it, <laughs> got it. All right. Okay, guys, well, thank you for checking this video out and checking Sean's set, or <laughs> Chase's setup, including Sean, uh, out here uh, north of Seattle. And uh, take care of your fish, take care of your tanks, and swim on, guys. Talk to you later.